Thank you. I'm going to talk about uh, patient selection in the 40-year-old uh, dysplastic hip. Uh, that's a transition age where either a PAO or a total hip would be appropriate, and you would agree that good patient selection is, is, uh, up, is, I, is necessary for that age group. This is a study done by Eduardo Novais and Atta Kiopor at our institution, and Florian um, uh, Shemart Ranzer was a, f a fellow from Bern that worked on the study. It's using the clinical material generated by myself, Mike Millis, and John Closey over, uh, over the last 20 years. So as you all know, we, we typically use a subjective radiographic grading of uh, arthritis. Um, if, you're, if you're going to be more precise, you could measure the joint space width. But these, these are all looking at tissue loss and secondary changes in the bone. So by the time you see these changes, you already have joint damage. We know from uh, data that both in FAI surgery and dysplasia surgery, if you see a lot of radiographic arthritis, the result, long-term results are poor. And we have shown in the past, using a degeneric done in the pre-op setting, degeneric is a, as a, as a special biochemical imaging technique using MR that will measure, uh, estimate charge density within cartilage. As you know, that is a lot, first changes that occur in the matrix before tissue loss. And we have shown uh, in the short term that degeneric is, the, is a very good predictor of a poor outcome, whether that's measured by poor uh, clinical outcome or conversion to total hip. And we have seen that degeneric index, uh, along with subluxation, are the two best predictor of early joint failure after PAO. We have used this technique clinically um, to in, in the 30 plus age group, and this is just to illustrate uh, a, a, a case a 44-year-old uh, lady with chronic right hip pain. So this, let's see. So this is the radiograph. You can see there's no secondary changes of arthritis. This is the, uh, the uh, normal morphologic uh, imaging. There's some cartilage changes within the femoral cartilage. And this is the degeneric index indicating, uh, the dark areas indicate low charge density. So the way we would use this is to measure the, uh, the average uh, T1 value within the articular surface, and we have nomograms to help us understand the risk of premature joint failure after PAO. So in this case, uh, the average value was 400. Uh, the, it's, a, it's a shared decision-making with the patient, uh, decide the risk is around 10% of early failure, and she underwent the PAO, um, and she did reasonably well. Now, <clears throat> and I'm, I'll go more into that, into that issue, but um, so, so you would agree that there is value in MR in this uh, older age group um, in deciding whether to do an arthroplasty versus a PAO. Um, so recently, we have looked at um, this particular age group uh, using a uh, cohort from two centers, from Washington University and Boston, uh, we had, in Boston, we did have degeneric data, and the idea was to understand which factors are going to be predictive of midterm outcome after PAO. So this is a, a study, a cohort generated over 20 years. Uh, the total cohort was around 1,000. Of those around um, a subset, 174 were over age 40. Uh, some were lost to follow-up, and, and we resulted in a, a cohort of around 145 over 40 that underwent PAO. So these are the, uh, the pre-op uh, demographic factors. As typical of dysplasia group is predominantly female. Um, the majority, 90%, had tonus grade zero or one arthritis. And this is, this is sort of typically what you would expect for this contemporary cohort. In terms of complications, um, we had some non-unions. One required surgical treatment, um, some low rates of uh, pulmonary embolus and deep infection. Again, typical of what you would expect with a contemporary PA cohort. Now, this is a very busy slide, but so I'm going to go through. So if you look at the, this is the failed hips looking at 
the changes in the synergy angle, they both, both groups had good correction, just that's, that's just to show you that. Um, in the fear group, there was some radiographic progression of arthritis, and you could see that in the fail group, fail group, the, uh, the pain scores did not improve. So these are clinical failures um, with some evidence of radiographic failure in, this, in, this, in the fail group. Now, in terms of pre-op pre factors that were predictive of poor outcome, as expected, uh, tonus grade was a, was a predictor of poor outcome, as well as uh, poor function pre-op. And this is looking at the Kaplan-Meier curve. The good news is that overall, uh, with reasonable patient selection, you were able to get uh, up to 10-year um, uh, immune survival time of around 15 years. Uh, so these groups had more than 10-year follow-up. And if you stratify by tonus grade, uh, with the routine uh, stratification that we do, uh, you can you can select out the, the poor uh, performers in this age group. All right. So the independent predictors of factor of, of poor outcome were the tonus grade and the warm-up function um, when you do the multivariate analysis. So this is uh, what we what we would typically do. Now the the next question was. If we were to use degeneric, can we do better in terms of patient uh, predictor? And this is just to, um, so we looked at the subset of patients that were uh, performed at Boston where we had the degeneric data. And we were able to do the quantitative analysis of the entire joint. Uh, we were, in some uh, group of patients that had the 3D data, we were able to segment out the cartilage and look at the degeneric map of the entire joint. And then we were able to look at the germic in different regions of the, of the joint to see if, if, it, if a particular region was more predictive than others. Now, this is the important data looking at the, um, the survive versus the failed hip, uh, hip group. Look, just looking at the overall average degenerate data. You can see it almost dichotomizes the, the two groups. And the, so this is looking at midterm failure as predicted by degenerate pre-op. We looked at the pre-op degeneric index in, in various regions. Um, it doesn't seem to really matter. Uh, you could do a simple average, and that seems to be just as good in terms of predicting outcome. We looked at, we also looked at cartilage thickness. Uh, it wasn't that predictive. And we looked at cartilage thickness in different parts of the joint again. Again, it wasn't that predictive. So <clears throat> this is just to um, now visually illustrate uh, the point. Uh, this is a, another 43-year-old uh, uh, that had some uh, MR evidence of early joint disease. This is the degeneric map of the whole joint. Blue indicates low degeneric values. You can see the entire joint has disease, low charge density. This patient underwent um, uh, total hip conversion because of poor uh, outcome, uh, clinical outcome. The contralateral side had similar uh, dysplasia, but this is the degeneric map. Again, uh, these color scale indicate values around 600 to 700, which is pretty healthy cartilage. And this patient uh, clinically did did well. Just just to illustrate the point, so. So the next step is to understand, um, can we do semi-quantitative scoring of joint damage? Um, to, because this is what's available to the general um, uh, clinical setting. And there, there are semi-quantitative scoring methods available to look at changes in, uh, focal changes in cartilage, cartilage osteophyte formation. Um, and that data has been collected by Florian has not yet been analyzed, so hopefully that will be, that will be presented in the future. So um, in this older age group, uh, degeneric is quite valuable in terms of patient selection. We're, 
the, our hope is that semi-quantitative scoring will be, will be valuable as well to refine our uh, method for patient selection in this age group. Thank you very much.